Welcome back, everybody. We're on part three now of episode 88. And as I said before, and as you probably just realized, but did you know coming before this, this is how we're going to have this set up from now on. Part three is going to be have the did you know all the time instead of having that at some kind of random section. We're also going to have the Bleacher Report card section here and any other kind of uh, special things that we need for that week, whether it's a sign me up or monthly mailbag or some kind of extra plugs or blah, 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 blah. This is kind of just going to be. <laughs> this is going to be like a commercial break, mixed with a specialty post kind of thing. So uh, it's a work in After progress. After these messages, we'll be right back. <laughs> God, that was a flashback. That's what our that's what our uh, intro or not our intro our commercial break thing is on <laughs> keeping kayfabe. So uh, work in progress, and um, hopefully we'll get this knocked out by next week even. Do we also wait a minute? Do we also include um, draft news? Yeah, we might. You know, it yeah. kind of all depends. Um, I suppose we could uh, mention that. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah sure. So of course, uh, as you can see on the screen right now, the first thing I'm going to knock out real fast is the Bleacher Report card, and the two posts that I have for this week are number one: WWE Money in the Bank 2013. Is it too obvious that Mark Henry won't win? Which one of my favorite responses was, duh. So, <laughs> Is that the whole article you going, duh? <laughs> no, one of the uh, comments was, duh, Anthony. <laughs> Just, that was it. Um, and the other one is, WWE Money in the Bank 2013, will someone cash in their title shot, specifically on the pay-per-view itself? So if you're interested in hearing my thoughts on those two topics, go to Bleach Report. The links are on the uh, descriptions below, so you can check that out. And there's uh, not going to be any sign me up. So we're going to move on to the monthly mailbag. So the mailbag, of course, if you guys don't know, <laughs> you're laughing at the fact that it's mail. Yeah, I did. <laughs> that <was> good. <laughs> <laughs> Work shot, uh, children. <laughs> as you can see on the screen, guys, the mailbag is pretty simple you send in your questions and we will answer it once a month usually uh on the pay-per-view prediction section but who knows maybe i'll switch it to something else or something now that this part three is kind of happening maybe i'll even make it a weekly thing instead i don't know but we're gonna roll right along now and we're gonna go right into question number one which is from best in the world one Hey, Smack Talk, just wondering, what are you guys' favorite pay-per-view that you watched live from 2010 through WWE Payback? I was trying to think of my answer to this, and I honestly don't have an answer. Oh, this I have is no easy. Idea. Mine's very Money, easy, too. Money in the Bank 2011. Easily. Mm-hmm. Same, same with me, Payback. No, no, nothing is anywhere near in competition. That's the best pay-per-view of the post-2000 era. Mine By far, fun. every match on that was awesome. Even Mark Henry and Big Show had a decent match in there. The Divas match was pretty good. Both Money in the Banks kicked ass with a couple of my favorite winners. I believe it was Daniel Bryan and Alberto Del Rio. It uh, was. Christian and Randy Orton were in the middle of the hottest feud of the year. That was the night that Christian spit in Randy Orton's mouth. It was just absolutely disgusting. Um, and to top it all off, I watched that pay-per-view in a bar with a good friend of mine that rarely watches wrestling. And overall, it was just a really fun experience. It, it was the perfect wrestling pay-per-view. Hmm. Um, I, oh, oh yeah, and John C and CM Punk did something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was it was booked to perfection that show. It and it had a, a level of hype after it aired too, going into the next uh, Monday Night Raw. I don't think anything touches it. So like, it's certainly the pay per view of what everybody calls the PG era. That's for sure. I don't see many wrestling pay per views outside of WrestleMania, and that's only because I make an effort to go see WrestleMania. Although I didn't see it this past year. The last pay-per-view I made an effort to go see was probably Royal Rumble 2012, Rock vs. Punk. I thought that was a pretty solid show. I liked it. That was 2013. Ro- oh, 2013. Mm-hmm. Was it this year? Yeah. Yep. Oh, wow. Time flies. Um, But yeah, well, Royal Rumble 2013, I thought Rock vs. Punk was a great matchup. I thought Punk really... That was the match that I think, to me, put Punk on the map in terms of being a top echelon main eventer like he was a main eventer because of money in the bank 2011 but rock versus punk really in my opinion cemented him in that spot 
Um, I thought the Royal Rumble was pretty interesting. I, I liked the fact that they ended with Ryback versus Cena. I thought that had some intrigue to it. Uh, boy, I can't really think of what other matches were on there. But um, in terms of uh, live pay-per-views, like I said, uh, that's the only non-WrestleMania one that I've seen in the past um, in the past three years. So I'm going to have to go with that. Hmm. Anybody else have a I have choice? two. I have two. And I'm going to say Money in the Bank 2011 for all the obvious reasons stated above. And Survivor Series 2011, mm. because I was there, and that was the first pay-per-view I had ever been to, and, and it was probably one of the best wrestling shows I had. I had, like, bomb-ass seats, um, CM Punk won the title, uh, I got to show off wrestling knowledge to my friend who actually thought Alberto Del Rio was going to win the match, and then this crane camera swoops down, I'm like, CM Punk is about to win, they're set up for a shot. Um, the rock came out after the show Well, he was, didn't leave the ring after the show and he what, did like 10 minutes on the mic. That was absolutely fucking hilarious. Uh, it was a good night and it was a night I will remember for the rest of my life. Hmm. You know what the you sad never... thing is, is that I went to WrestleMania and I still rank money in the bank over that. What you're talking about for this year's? Yeah, mm-hmm. I went to this year's WrestleMania and I still rank money in the bank from 2011 as a higher experience than going to WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. No, I've I had more fun um, to, to a certain extent is even just watching pay-per-views in uh, Dace's basement with everybody else hanging out than at... Uh, in the basement? The basement, yeah. <laughs> than uh, <laughs> going to I'm WrestleMania. no one's bringing up uh, Extreme Rules 2012. That, that was a... Barely- I remember having a lot of fun watching that. I remember having yeah. a lot of fun watching um, Bragging Rights, actually. The one year with um, Dolph Ziggler and Daniel Bryan. I remember that that... Um, I don't remember exactly the rest of the card, but I remember specifically that match being something uh, that just really was like, holy shit, this is awesome. Extreme Rules, was that the one with Cena Lesnar? Yes. Yeah, I heard that one was a pretty solid show, too. Yeah, so I don't have a full-on answer for that, but as you heard, uh, you know, the one in the bank, obviously that's a potential option that I'm sure a lot of people would pick, and... You know, Royal Rumbles are always fun. WrestleManias are usually kind of fun unless they really are like a pain in the ass. Like, uh, what was it, 25 or something that was like really fucking awful? Oh, uh, that was the one that was it. No, 25 was the one headlined by um, Triple H versus Randy Orton. No, well, that, 20- that match sucked, yeah. I, 20- I fell asleep during that WrestleMania. <laughs> the only, th- trust me, if it wasn't for the fact that um, Michaels versus Undertaker 1 happened on that show, that would have been probably one of the worst WrestleManias of this decade. Seconded only by WrestleMania 27. That was the one that, that was the one headlined by um, Miz versus Cena, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that pay-per-view was, was especially terrible. Well, even though it's not 2010, I, uh, to mention one pay-per-view that I remember having a lot of fun watching was WrestleMania 24. Yes, oh, I, my I, yes. Still to this day, in my opinion, probably one of the most well-rounded WrestleManias. I mean, it had it had every kind of match you can think of. To me, the the Money in the Bank was a great matchup. You had um, you had the stuff between Big Show and um, Floyd Mayweather, so you had your celebrity involvement. Uh, you had the main of you had Edge versus Taker, which on its own was a great matchup. You had uh, you had John- Hornswoggle getting pelted with a fucking uh trash can oh yeah that that was that was great that was awesome it's actually uh, my but... uh my favorite my personal favorite wrestlemania i don't think any mania has topped that since then i still the I, best i have a, I have kind of negative connotations about it because when i when i was in college when that wrestlemania hit i had just started working at the mcdonald's in between universal and the um citrus bowl so we were right in the middle so the first week i had started was that weekend so i was getting people not only coming in for spring break to universal i was also getting all the wrestling fans coming in to watch wrestlemania so that that was a particularly rough first week so you got hit with all that pyro if just if jester were here he'd tell you because he was at that show he was at the mcdonald's (laughs) he was at the show at mcdonald's no, he was he was at he was at the uh, WrestleMania 24. Well, that's question number one, and um, number two comes from June Ryder. What do you guys actually? It's a two part question. What do you guys think of the Dark Knight Christopher Nolan series in general? And do you think any wrestler today would have been a possible character in one of those movies? Big fan of Smack Talk. 
Um, uh, for as a general kind of answer for this, uh, I would say check out fanboysanonymous.com. We, you know, I've mentioned it a bunch of different times before. Mostly everybody who's involved in the Smack Talk, actually, I think everybody at this point for the most part. Yep. Mm-hmm. Everybody's Smack kind of involved anonymous. in um, Fanboys Anonymous, and uh, th- pretty much the whole point of Fanboys Anonymous is to talk about our thoughts on that kind of stuff. So. We talk about that crap all the time and all that other kind of stuff. So if you're interested in that, um, definitely go check out that. Um, as far as the wrestler side of things, being a Batman fan of my own, I wouldn't cast anybody in it because I would end up being that type of person that would... Uh, all the people that go, well, Batista would have been a good Bane. And I'm like, nah, I can't see it. Like, I went Argentine Bane. <laughs> I'm not a fan of casting wrestlers in superhero roles even though they really like look the part it has to be something really specific like i'm not uh one way or the other when it comes to batista playing well what the hell is it drax the destroyer i think in um guardians of the galaxy because i don't know anything about guardians of the galaxy so uh, it's kind of like well if he fucks it up i don't care because it's not a character i can give a shit about but if i if, do and he's i cry inside every time i hear that he's announced well if it would be yeah. like you know um you don't think The Rock would be a good Superman? No. <laughs> I think he's well, a great Superman. I do think well, The Rock would be nah. a good Black Adam. Yeah, I was just about to say that. Well, we don't need to be get racist about this. <laughs> <laughs> he's only half black, okay? He's half black. <laughs> he's half black. <laughs> half black. <laughs> That's the title of the episode, Half Black Adam. You choose The Rock for, for Superman? I was thinking you were going <laughs> to... Say the obvious choice for Superman. John well, Cena. <laughs> John Cena isn't tall enough. Yeah, no, John Cena would be more like the thing. <laughs> I I remember hearing like really faint rumors back when they were casting Captain America that one of the names bandied about was John Cena. I oh Triple God. H's Thor. That was a huge rumor for a long time. Yeah, oh absolutely. God. Ugh. Yo, yo, Brandon, I'm going to switch this one up on you. How about Vince McMahon as Rachel Ghoul? <laughs> that would be great. No, uh, no. It, it, Vince McMahon is Rupert Thorne. Oh. oh, that would be great. But yeah, I can't think of anybody really on the roster right now that I would like to see in any kind of... Um, William Regal could be Alfred. <laughs> Alfred. <laughs> the only thing I could see, though, and this is kind of showing how much of a geek I am when it comes to this kind of stuff, I can see certain wrestlers playing like Blockbuster or Orca. Like those kind of characters, you know. Unknown uh, fucking clues of these people. Yeah, that, what, that's you, that's. What, what language did you start speaking? <laughs> I started speaking geek speak. Oh. <laughs> you know, oh, and, and and I know um, Brad Maddox should be Batman because he's not the GM we wanted, but he's the one we deserve. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna suggest AJ Lee as Catwoman just for the suit. Hmm. <laughs> I would not mind seeing her in that suit at all. Mm-mm. You know what? Fuck Catwoman. We'll just put her in like bad necks with a mask. Of it. Yeah. But and I think it was um Jeep Swenson. Is that his name? Or Jeep Swanson or whatever? Who played Bane in Batman and Robin? Who was apparently a former wrestler, and that kind of turns me off on the whole idea. But we don't talk about Batman yeah, and Robin in like... this here parts. You, you said you said it. The first thing that immediately disqualified your sentence was in Batman and Robin. <laughs> well, everything about Batman and Robin is terrible for the most part, but yeah, I think the soundtrack, Studio yeah. Justice, <laughs> Studio Gotham Justice. City, it's a peaceful place oh, to live. Yeah. I will no, say I... there's one good thing about Batman and Robin. The theme song that they used for Watchmen is actually a cu- is actually a remixed cut cu- version. I was going to say that Batman same exact Robin. thing. I was going to say that same exact yeah. thing. I love that song. The end is the beginning is the end. That is a good song. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, I can't really see anybody, you know, Seamus can't really play a Batman character. Luke Harper uh, really. Seamus could be Poison Ivy. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the way he sh- shaked his rump in that match of Fandango? Oh, God. He, he knows how to move his hips. <laughs> Can you guys think of any kind of wrestlers that would play any good parts? I can't think of any. I'm just now thinking of Sheamus moving his hips and shaking his rump. Clearly Thank they can make Payton. a WWE version of the Justice League with uh, the cast of characters we mentioned. Yeah. Who would be Aquaman? Oh, and you know what? I don't think we ever gave our opinions of the Dark Knight trilogy. I'm just going to say it's the most overrated thing in the Batman franchise. Oh! <laughs> 
people. I'm, I'm not saying lot. it's the worst. I'm just saying it's the most overrated. It's very passable. They're very well made films. A lot of cool things happen in them. But you know what? They're not that good. And you know what? I don't like them, especially because they've ruined superhero movies in general. Because now every superhero movie that comes out has to be about the superhero being a whiny, emo little person who has to worry about his feelings and not just kicking ass and saving people. <laughs> and killing the villain every five minutes. Just saying. Hmm. So if you're more interested in what we uh, have to say about the Chris Nolan Dark Knight trilogy and any other kind of stuff like that. Remember fanboysanonymous.com. Maybe we'll even get paid in the write up a big post about what's overrated about. Yeah. The why, and... why superheroes suck now, apparently. <laughs> and we're going to move on to the next question. And these are actually a bunch of them from awesome piano man. Number one, do sponsorships on YouTube pay you for each ad that plays before each video on your channel? Not directly. Uh, the ads are part of the Google AdSense program and you get paid based off of impressions and clicks. So, you know, to an extent, you might get like a penny for each thing or something like that. That's why I keep mentioning how broke I am when it comes to that kind of stuff. And why, if you've noticed, I have like as many ads as possible pop up on there. Which, I know, it sucks, but hey, that is supposed to be some kind of a job. So, he, it's gonna he, be he to speaks the... the truth, people. He really does. That's how it works. Yeah. It's going to be to the point where. Tony starts doing like product placement in his videos. Like, ah, hold on, I've got to pick, I've got to take a drink from this great Coca Cola. <laughs> or well, a seven, great idea, months. Miguel. I might have to uh, insert that in my content. Soon. Well, there is there is the option to doing that kind of stuff, but I haven't gotten any of that. And one thing with uh, this full screen network partnership thing is that they do allow for these other special type of ads, but they don't actually apply to me. Because they're all about stuff like, I mean, I've mentioned it before to other people, stuff like make a video of your cat doing a Star Wars thing. And it's like, well, I'm allergic to cats. And if I put that on Smart Cat Moment, everybody would be like, what the fuck is this? You know, nobody really, nobody really wants to see my, my dog on a wrestling show or me I promote do. some kind of a, uh, a Sorry, different vlog you. channel. Oh, no, you know how like they have... Dog. You, you know how like they have puppy puppy uh the puppy bowl? We, mm -hmm. we could do like puppy mania where we have like cute little puppies wrestle in a ring. Fuck Stop. Don't, do, do not give WWE ideas. No, we gotta that. copy that right now. We gotta copy puppy mania right now. <laughs> we need to get a British bulldog to be a part of it. Yes, <laughs> and it will be the British bulldog. The wild male one to you. So that's how that works. It's mostly you know impressions and clicks. Number two, if each member of Smart Out Movement got a job at WWE or TNA, which we wouldn't get any jobs at TNA, uh, what would our titles be? Obviously, if you're going I, for what you would want, I would obviously want to be a part of creative of some sort. Um, what about you? Yeah, it's not fit for anyone else. I'm calling, I'm calling Diva Fluffer. <laughs> oh, I was going to say AJ's masseuse. Fine, I'll take Roman Reigns' masseuse. <laughs> It's the hair, it's isn't it? It's scary when he's drunk. Yeah, that that wouldn't seem as funny for the people that didn't know that he had posted something earlier on. No, 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 no. Roman Reigns is a very sexy, attractive man. I'm sure everyone completely gets it. <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, look, I said, I'm straight as a fucking arrow, and I could admit that dude is handsome as fuck. <laughs> I'll say he's got the look. He's he got a jaw that's like boring. Oh, oh my god, dude. Michelangelo sculpted that thing. It's fucking <laughs> perfect. <laughs> that is that is probably the best looking Samoan I've ever seen in my life. Yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ladies and gents, these guys are straight as arrows. Totally. I'm talking hey. to butchers right now, son. Hey, actually, that only secures how straight they are if they can admit how much more uh, <laughs> handsome another man is than them. Well, I think I think we figured out what Brandon and Mike would be. They'd be the new Billy and Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> You look so. I'm Billy. So, so, Tony, does that make you our Rico? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I could see Tony in that suit. I'd rock that. So, what what do you think that you would uh, want your job to be in um, WWE or your TNA, Brandon? Ah, uh, okay. Ideally, again, creative. Uh, I'd like to be a road agent, maybe, because that's something I have a lot of experience with. Uh, uh, depart. Uh, what was what was Lauren Ias's title? Um, Talker. The executive vice president executive of talent vice... relations and the interim general manager of Monday Night Raw. 
Executive Vice <laughs> of Talent Relations was my uh, position, was my technically f- formal position in MVW that I gave myself. <laughs> Honestly, aside from Diva Fluffer, um, which I don't even know exists, as lo- if I didn't have to deal with Vince screaming in my ear, I'd want to be an announcer. Announcer or commentator? Commentator. Commentator. I- I'd want to be. Co- I'd want to do either play by play or color. I've done it. It's 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 really hard because <laughs> you got to be funny, and or you know gotta, you have to pay attention. You have to be witty, and yeah, it's it's not as easy as as you think. Oh yeah, you can just sit there and talk about wrestling. No, you gotta you have a script that you gotta stick to. It's you know, and that's not with somebody yelling in my ear. What yeah. do you think, Mike Payton? I would actually definitely go with the announcer or commentator. Actually, I would like to be more of an on-screen role as far as like uh, a general manager or a manager in general. <laughs> no, I, did not, <laughs> I did not mean to say that like that. That came out kind of cool. Right. You, you can be, you can do Jeremy Borash's job or the job he used to have. I don't know. You know I do not want to do the kind of jobs that he was doing. Let me tell you. That could be your uh, your shtick when you do commentary is you just do backward sentences like that. <laughs> you do uh, what the hell are they called? Dyslexic. Or just like you could be like the John Madden of wrestling, like just <laughs> the most obvious and mundane thing, <laughs> yes. the simplest way possible. I, I'm gonna follow what Brandon said though. If it wasn't for someone yelling in my ear all the time, um, you know, I hear when Triple H is in the gorilla position, he's not as bad about that. You know, he just pretty much lets people do their own thing. So if it was in the Triple H era, I think I would do a commentator. But uh, you know, if not, I, I think I would stick to. Uh, you know, be it being like uh, I, I'd want to do something similar to like Mick Foley did with the general manager and have a lot of fun with it, not just be a person who comes out on the mic once in a while and just says, "Oh, here's your matches, play a holla holla holla." <laughs> Tag team, that's the Undertaker. You got your own little office in the back, surrounded by barbed wire, and you got your little gavel. Your fake office. Yeah, <laughs> basically just I'm, like four placards. I, I would have like a moose head and like you know a little duck and a would real it classic. P- would it be Pierre the moose head? Sure. I'll, I'll dig that out of the WWE archive, see if anybody gets the reference. Awesome. Burhan, what do you think? I'll be the next Lord Alfred Hayes. I told him to consideration brought to you by the following. Say that. Say that right now. <laughs> do it. Do it. Do it. No, it's paid for by the following. Three, two, one, do it. Promotional <laughs> consideration paid for by the following. Not you, okay. the actual person with a British accent. <laughs> Promotional consideration paid for by the following. Yes! Um, yes! I'm stealing that soundbite. That's yes! going to replace half of these messages. We'll yes! be right back. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> A thousand times, yes. Oh my god. So I weird. think you just orgasmed. Yeah, it sounded like it. No, I think it was in an Herbal Essence commercial. <laughs> He's just doing a scene from When Harry Met Sally. Uh, I, want, I want what he's having. <laughs> What about you, Braden? Clearly, I'd have to be a member of creative as well as being somebody who's involved with talent. Like whether you're for talent relations or just scouting, I would want to pick out and see who might be a good prospect for WWE's future for, for stars or whatnot, or even for TNA to a lesser degree. So you'd want to work Lord the knows they need center. some talent scouting there. So you'd want to work for the Performance Center then? Oh, yes, that, that, that'd be brilliant. If I actually had any credentials to work there, yeah, that'd that, 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 that be a lot of fun, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, the third question here from Awesome Piano Man. What did this guy write a fucking book? <laughs> <laughs> oh, stealing my thunder. <laughs> <laughs> the reason we're laughing is because we just had to record this section and he just completely stole and it. I, <laughs> he just totally stole my bit. <laughs> you fucking steered me, bro. <laughs> I'm Bill Hicks right now. That's how I feel. So as He's I said, trade. as I said the first time around, <laughs> yes, the more the better, the more the better. Um, as Awesome Piano Man said, I appreciate that I get pointed out for checking out previous episodes for Smart Gal Moment. I've been picking up a lot more of the origins of inside jokes, including poor writing, fuck Lillian Garcia and Nancy Benoit. So with that being said, would you mind telling me why nerdgasms <laughs> was a thing? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Do you want to tell us why, Brian? <laughs> yes. I ca- I said something during one of the episodes where I said, "Where go to the genius where nerdgasms come to grow." As a joke, 
Hayden and Brandon ripped the shit fuck. out of me, and it became a thing. <laughs> Worst fucking catchphrase ever. Uh, no, I don't know about that. There's nah, another problem. inside joke that he, that Burhan is responsible for. Worst period catchphrase period ever. Period. <laughs> what do you mean, the Bob Core Holly? Yeah, that was awesome. That's not worse. That was awesome. Well, that, wasn't during, that wasn't during the Sparky plugs, was it? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the nerd guy no. comes from, um, I talks. think it was episode 83, hmm. um, if memory serves correct. It wasn't that long ago when it happened. I might have been on that one, if, it, if anything. It might have. It might have been one of the first ones that you were on. It was actually mentioned in Smack Talk. I, I couldn't remember if it was in one of the other projects. Like, uh, maybe it got mentioned in passing and I got gameplay or something like that. No, that was no, the, no, it no, happened no, in Smack, Smack Talk. Talk. Okay. Plugs, the Thurman Sparky plugs the Smack Talk. <laughs> uh, and Miguel, you were curious about, what was it? Lillian like, Garcia. Was, Where'd the Lillian yeah. Garcia one come in? Uh, if I remember correctly, Dace went off on Lillian one day and called her pretty much every uh, mean name in the book and started talking to her as, um, quote, a big-lipped whore. And, um, <laughs> it was me and Dace, actually. That, that yeah, one. you kind of just, like, the two of you were, like, ran with it, and uh, it became this running thing where... That was, I think, right around the time as the whole Fuck Ultimate Warrior thing, too, right? Yes. Yep. Which we caught a lot of shit for that, but I still it surprises the hell out of me. We can make fun of the Eliminator and all that, but <laughs> we've gotten more crap out of the the thing between Kevin Nash arguing with Ultimate Warrior than we've gotten from anything else. Period in these eighty eight episodes. So you know, it makes me laugh as well. We never got any like negative feedback over me talking about wanting to fuck Nancy Benoit's corpse. <laughs> right, yeah, it's, it's uh, awful as that is. Uh, I like whole... Lillian Garcia. Is, is I don't know. That maybe that puts me up. It's because you're yeah. both brown. Well, she's technically not brown. I think she's attractive. I don't know about you guys. No, I like Sarah Corey. Jessica Parker too. I like her. I want her talker flavored kisses. Sorry, uh, I was taking. My, I was untangling my headphones. I said I want her taco flavored kisses. <laughs> We heard it the first time. That's why we didn't laugh. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't sure. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it, 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 that was the best comeback you've ever had. I really was. Stop. <laughs> I'd stop. I'd stop right now because you're never going to be able to top that. That was it. Uh, and um, the, right fourth, in, the fourth question from Awesome Piano Man here. Do you have any opinions or find any value on any other Mark reviews on the internet, such as the John Report by John Canton? I actually never heard of that guy before uh, getting this question. I looked him up, and I wasn't really impressed. Uh, my, but, friend TJ John. With John my friend TJ reads John. My friend TJ reads the John Report a lot. I, listen, I, listen to the, I listen to the uh, sound off. I don't know if any of you guys have heard of that. The uh, Solo Monster? Yes. I've been a fan of his ever since uh, one of the first, like, five episodes i've listened to him since i'm subscribed to tv tracks if that counts uh scscoops.com is where he posts all of his episodes he's really smart like i've i he's one of the he's one of the big things that got me into wrestling i mean it it's a great podcast i would i would really take up listening to it Hmm. the only one i follow is keeping kayfabe what's up hey special shout out to my man the john harder at the hardaway podcast Oh, one of the wrestling podcasts that I listen to. Oh, and and the uh, the pro wrestling report. I I have been watching them for a couple years oh, now. Those fucking marks. So oh, other than they, other than they, they have their moments. They 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 yeah they they've kind of gotten really cheesy and gimmicky as of late. But when when they first started, or at least when I first started watching them around 07, they were they were pretty legit. I watched them recently, I, and like Damian Nelson had a neck brace on, and he was in a wheelchair, and the semi hot chick was wheeling I, him around. I know it was not very good. It's gotten re- ever since they got I, t- uh, ever since they got their local TV deal, they've gotten really gimmicky. Yeah. I miss they Meathead. Done- oh yes, God meathead yes, was so good. Yeah, he he does now all of their um, after show special um, uh, stuff on Blog Talk, like after Impact, after uh, Raw. He usually just does that. He doesn't do TV stuff, which sucks because I totally agree. The years that he was on were were so much fun. Dave Hero is a fat shit, and he's always like name dropping. Like I don't like that guy. Hmm. He's, he's, uh, Dave Hero. He's a he's a wrestling promoter in Milwaukee. He does um, color on their on that show, and he's. He's, 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 his, his character is like 
pompous and over the top, but he does make some good points here and there, I guess. Is there any relation to like, Chris Hero? Any no, he's fun? made that joke before plenty of times. Well, I typically Super don't genius. listen to anybody because mostly I don't have the time to, but for a lot of them that I have listened to, they were either good and just not good enough for me to find the time to do it or really awkward and awful. Um, yeah, some of them, I'm sure that there's a lot that I've never heard, period, that are probably fantastic. But the thing that bothers me about a lot of other podcasts is I really don't like, and I talked to Peyton about this before, I really don't like when you have a group of people that... Um, talk over each other a whole lot and kind of don't have, I, I like the structure that smart out moment has. And I like the structure that we're keeping kayfabe is like, let's talk about some stuff, but then we're also going to have this one match that we're going to talk a lot about. I don't like when a lot of podcasts are like, let's just talk about wrestling this week. Blah, 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 and they just kind of go crazy. Oh, and it, it annoys the crap out of me and I can't stand it, especially Did because I mean, to be perfectly honest, I'm included in this as well, but there's an overabundance of podcasts of wrestling. Mm -hmm. what, were the, what were the names of those two TNA marks who you do, used to do a show and then they got hired by TNA at one point to do a show? There were, the, there were two guys that used to do a show on the internet and all they talked about was how great TNA is and how good WWE is. And at one point they actually got hired by TNA to do like a little online show that they... they got paid to do, and then TNA fired them, and they stopped talking about TNA. Because they realized that these guys were full of shit. They probably were sucking up to try to get some kind of a deal or something. Yeah. Well, they, if it, it worked, then it uh, would well, help, you know. But yeah. I'm not going to do that. In terms of podcasts, I'd probably say the worst one that I ever heard was the show called The Don Tony Show. Yes! I was just about to say that. I recently checked worst that out. Worst show. That fat fucking Italian fuck. Think he fucking knows every goddamn ever. thing that's going on. Their sound quality is terrible. The beginning of the show is like ten goddamn minutes of music and sound effects. It takes forever for the show to actually start. Oh my god, it was awful. I, I don't even think the same. Is this the same guy who had Kevin Nash on his YouTube channel? Maybe I've got. I don't know. Yeah, I, I think it is the same. He's like a fat Italian dude, and he know he knows like less than nothing. It's like half the time he was trying to even interview Kevin Nash. He was being prompted by Nash to like rephrase the question because he had no idea what the guy was fucking talking about. Um, so it probably is the same dude, and the dude's got a lot more money than sense. Oh, it's, just... it was awful. I don't even know if it's still going because I haven't seen yes, any posts about it. it. Oh, it, okay. uh, I'm subscribed to TV Tracks. So I listen to a few clips of there. I don't. I don't think it's. But I'm listening to clips. I'm not listening to the entire show. Hmm. I think he brings up some decent points sometimes. Like I don't. I don't hate. Uh, I, and keep in mind, I just listen to the clips. I don't listen to the entire show. Peyton uh, has Probably experience listen listening. To the whole show. <laughs> he, he goes on for at least two hours every week, and he is just the worst. And his other freaking co-host like doesn't know yeah. shit about wrestling. He like doesn't know a goddamn thing. <laughs> like he's always he, he reminds me of this guy who was sitting behind me at WrestleMania. Who it, like going to WrestleMania must have been his first wrestling show ever. He's like, is that Brock Lesnar? Whoa, is he always that big? Wow, he looks big. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> That was the same guy who he saw. Uh, was it Garcia. even Brock Lesnar? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like fucking. Were you, were, you, were you sitting next to Art Donovan? Uh, but the guy at least had one good quote. How much was this guy? What? Lillian Garcia yeah. came out. He was like, mm, "I want to tape them, leg, take them legs, and dip them in sugar." <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, were you, what was that? The primetime players? Now you were sitting next to. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, when Lillian um, Garcia pops out, Daze is in the crowd going, "Big left horn." Oh. Listen, if you want good wrestling podcasts, Smack Talk, Keeping Kayfabe, Mega Powers Radio, and two ones that were done by professionals, Cole Cabana's podcast, and the Steve Austin Show. Yes. Check all those out. And if you guys have any that you think are particularly good or even better, particularly awful, that you want us to check out, send a comment uh, on here on this one, and I'll I'll find a way to check it out and, I don't know, do something Um but that the Don, whatever you guys had just said, I'll have to check that one out for Don, sure. Don, Tony, Tony, and Kevin Castle. <laughs> <laughs> it's awful. It's so bad. <laughs> it just sound, to me, that just sounds like Don and Tony go to White Castle, but still. <laughs> and we have one more question. 
And this question comes from Andre. If you could have any superpower, what would it be and why? And similar to the Dark Knight question, I'm going to actually point you to fanboysanonymous.com. We actually did an entire roundtable discussion episode about what superpowers we would like to have, which ones are some shitty superpowers out there, which ones are the best, and some uh, some interesting topics popped up. I think it was Peyton who suggested a bunch of different stuff, like if you could have a superpower that nobody else could have or else you kind of get rid of the power i forget the the um the actual rules to it but you you got your chance to make a wish to get any power in the world but you can't make the same wish as anyone else in the world because if you did it cancels it out and nobody gets the power so you have one chance to think of a unique superpower that no one else in the world's going to think of yeah, so we have all that covered in, I think it is episode three or four of the Roundtable Discussion podcast that we have for that. So go to youtube.com slash uh, fanboysanonymous, or you can check it out on the monthly group meeting section of uh, fanboysanonymous.com, along with, of course, obviously, the uh, Dace Man show and Geek Speak and I Got Gameplay and all the other kind of stuff that you can see at Fanboys Anonymous. So thank you guys again for all of the mailbag questions and either we're going to do this again next month or maybe it'll become a weekly mailbag and maybe it'll be only like one question or something like that to kind of make it a little bit quicker. But who knows? Uh, Tell me what you guys think. If you guys would rather keep this as one big monthly thing or if you'd rather do like one question a week or something like that. And, you know, we'll figure that out. And we're going to move on now and start getting into the real nitty-gritty of this whole episode. The pay-per-view predictions for Money in the Bank coming up in part.